Hello and welcome to this Mobile World Live webinar, Smartphones are the New Seatbelt, where we take an in-depth view into how MNOs can turn driver safety into a profit centre. My name is Kavit Majithia and I'll be your moderator for this session and I'm delighted to be joined by our two speakers, Jonathan Mathis, who is the CEO and co-founder of Zendrive. Jonathan, great to have you. Thank you so much for having us. And Charles Juniper, who is Principal Analyst at Ovum. Charles, great, great for you to be here. Thanks very much. Enjoying. So today we're going to run through a number of uh, different topics, um, including uh, the potential and the pen potential for the driver safety market, and also the ability for smartphones to really provide a great tool uh, in this area, and the potential for MNOs to tap into this potentially very lucrative opportunity. Jonathan, uh, I'd like to kick things off with you. Um, Obviously, the accessibility of technology and smart, the increased usage of smartphones uh, is a great benefit for everyone in everyday life, but not so much for people behind the wheel. That's true. Um, these days, we are all very much attuned to the epidemic of distracted phone use. And this is something that unfortunately has reversed the trend of fatalities on the road that are now on the increase again. Um, this is something that I personally feel somewhat responsible for. I was a very early employee on the Android team, on the Facebook mobile team, and some of the negative externalities of our addiction to smartphones are killing teenagers on the road. Charles, um, we've seen some alarming statistics ara around this uh, issue. Uh, do you want to run us through uh, some of what you, what you found? Sure. Um there's always been distracting uh, distractions when driving, whether it's adjusting in the climate control or even just talking to another passenger. Um, but the big difference between smartphone use whilst driving and these perhaps what we call traditional um, distractions is the fact that a smartphone use actually occupies a number of senses simultaneously. So if you were just listening to a passenger, you know, that's kind of auditory. Um, distraction or if you're just adjusting the climate control then you, know, you take your hand off the wheel for a second that's just a manual distraction but if for example you're texting whilst driving you, you're there's a cognitive distraction because you're actually thinking about what you're actually going to say there's visual distraction because you're looking at, at the device there's also manual distraction as you're actually typing and so smartphone use really occupies a lot of the kind of uh, capabilities of someone whilst they're driving. And uh, it results in the fact that someone could be distracted for anywhere between two to four seconds. So if you imagine a car going at 50, 60, or, or even 70 miles an hour for four seconds, the amount of distance that's covered, that's, that's a huge distraction. And, and it's one of the reasons that um, smartphone use whilst driving is, is, has such serious consequences. And we're seeing some of the numbers on the slides here. I mean, uh, just in the, in, in the US last year, there were over 3,400 fatalities. And while some of the data is difficult to gather, um, because official records like police crash incidents record different things, the view we're getting is that 10% of all fatalities in Europe and North America are down to distracted driving. Uh, and the real tragedy here is, is actually all those deaths and fatalities and serious injuries are completely avoidable. Mm -hmm. No, it's a concerning, concerning problem. Um, it kind of brings us on to the opportunity for MNOs uh, in this market. Um, how has the, adapt, uh, the market adapted in recent years and where do you see the space for operators to tap into? Um, when we started Zendrive a few years ago, we really honed in on the problem that Charles described, the problem of fatalities on the road. But it turned out the solution itself is also the same device, it's the smartphone. We're gonna talk about that. Um, and uh, uh, trusted partners for consumers, for families, for teenagers in delivering services on smartphones are MNOs. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, as uh, we'll discuss, that uh, consumers already in the US and in Europe and elsewhere care a lot about safety, about distraction on the road, and parents and uh, spouses and businesses are willing to pay in order to get that peace of mind. All in all, we're talking about a huge, huge market that is growing quickly that MNOs have a natural right to play in. All right. Charles, any thoughts? Uh, yes. I mean, I, as, as we can see on this slide here, um, there's a lot of evidence already that there is strong consumer demand for driver safety services, um, and particularly for the um, uh, 
uh, versions using embedded telematics devices or after uh, aftermarket devices. So, for instance, uh, something like GM's OnStar, for instance, has two million customers who are willing to pay upwards of twenty-five dollars a month. Uh, and in some cases up as high as $80 a month. So we estimate this market is, is currently worth about $11 billion. Uh, and as you can see, uh, with the numbers there, you know, hundreds of millions of uh, families across uh, both emerging and um, mature markets that have a teenager. And this is one of the prime areas where, where parents who are paying for their um, uh, children's phone uh, actually also want to know that they're, they're safe. And, and, and that uh, embedded hardware solution we, we, we call Gen 1. Um, and you know, it, it proves that there is an appetite there, but the real opportunity we think lies with uh, a software-only solution. So using the uh, smartphone as a, a sensing platform, um, uh, and we think that's because that device is far more ubiquitous, uh, certainly in mature markets, and we're seeing very, very rapid takeoff uh, in, in um, emerging markets. So we think actually, the real opportunity, both in terms of impacting the number of serious injuries and fatalities we, we talked about, but also uh, a, a huge opportunity in terms of revenue opportunity for those service providers that can actually offer these kind of services. Um, uh, we've done some, as, as part of Open's research, we've actually looked at this market and, and we forecast that this market globally, and, and this market is uh, we're measuring in terms of uh, revenues generated by consumers for these smartphone-based uh, services. We estimate this market's going to grow at something like a, a compound annual growth rate of 19% uh, and will reach just short of $30 billion by uh, 2020, uh, 2022. Key markets at the moment, unsurprisingly, are places like uh, uh, Europe, the mature markets. That's being driven by very high uh, percentage of vehicle ownership, uh, also uh, high penetration of, of smartphones but what we're all and, and, and similarly in, in North America but um, uh, where we see the real opportunities are actually emerging markets um, uh, because uh, the mature markets were uh, approaching something like saturation uh, when it comes to vehicle purchase and, and, and smartphones although we believe there's gonna be a lot of take up the real opportunity is, is APAC uh, there we're seeing uh, car ownership um, smartphone ownership go through the roof um, uh, as hundreds of millions of emerging middle class um, come, in, uh, come into being and, and, and actually are demanding these kind of services. Going back to um, some of Charles's points, uh, Jonathan, do you see a similar sort of demand um, in the regions that he mentioned? Uh, yeah, we see demand all over the globe. Uh, we've been quite active and Zendrive got customers really in every geography you can imagine. Um, but I, I want to I anchor us back to what's the actual uh, problem that's being solved and mm -hmm. the individuals so that, that, are, that are caring about, uh, about road safety. So whether you're the chief marketing officer for Vodafone or a stay-at-home mom living in Madrid, there is a few people in your life you care a lot about. And those people are either driving themselves or are being driven. This can be to a tennis class, to the office, to an appointment, to a date. Um, and these days, uh, this day and age, because of the ubiquity of Uber, because of the uh, easiness of mobility as a service, you have young adults and young teenagers being driven around mm. um, without the knowledge or without the supervision of their parents by professional or even semi-professional drivers. And so there are tremendous um, uh, concerns and fears that some are you know, quite justified about what's happening with my kid on the road and what's happening with my wife or, uh, or my husband on the road. And being able to interject and provide value there, provide this peace of mind, is a really magical moment that connects to the brand statement that many MNOs have already and the special relationship they have with families. And we put together a little video that illustrates this magical moment um, where a, uh, a family in need is notified and where care is being taken. So maybe we can watch this uh, brief video. Sure. When we think about drivers and passengers, we think about safety. At Zendrive, we're on a mission. We believe if someone's in a car crash, 
whether you're in your own car or someone else's car. Emergency responders and loved ones who you specify in advance should be notified immediately. Deployed at scale and in action with some of the largest global wireless carriers and consumer apps, ZenDrive's technology is tried and tested. ZenDrive has tracked more than 60 million drivers over 150 billion miles. It has increased customer safety, average revenue per user, engagement, and satisfaction. Our goal is to get ZenDrive's patented smartphone-based automatic collision notification to every smartphone in the world. Join us in making the roads safer. ZenDrive, making roads safer through data and analytics. It's a very uh, interesting insight there. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, Jonathan, um, how exactly does ZenDrive technology work? Are you just tracking collisions or does it track other, other variables? Um, so ZenDrive technology is uh, very powerful um, and is using machine learning algorithms to distill sensor data from smartphones and make sense of it. And so, for instance, we can differentiate between someone dropping the phone in the car and actual crash or distracted phone use, whether someone is tapping or making a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, and our algorithms, again, tested across many, many billions of miles and millions of drivers, are very accurate at predicting crashes. And so we can also score drivers and help um, improve driving behavior. So we do all of those. And there's certainly a lot of value for families and for drivers with those set of services. Uh, but what we found is that uh, the emotional connection and the moment of truth mm. is um, the time of a crash or uh, a, light, uh, a light risky situation. And that's where we come in and provide a ton of value. And that's where MNOs can really unlock some of this uh, goodwill opportunity. Makes sense. Uh, going back to the presentation, um, the, the case for the smartphone, Charles, um, do you believe that um, there is clear evidence that uh, smartphone telematics are superior to, to previous generations? C certainly. I mean, it, as, as we've mentioned already, that, you know, smartphones are uh, you know, a very powerful sensor and, and compute platform and, and continue to evolve. Um, there's some research by the University of Illinois, for instance, where they looked at a number of smart co uh, smartphones compared to telematics devices and found that actually a smartphone is absolutely on par and, and in some situations uh, actually better in 96% of all driving situations. But there are some subtle differences as well that, that, that um, the smartphone has over telematics devices. One is it actually tracks the person rather than being fixed to a vehicle. Uh, and, and, and the other aspect is it can also pick up stuff such as phone usage and what you're actually doing uh, that, that a fixed telematic device cannot do. So there's a, a, an awful lot of uh, benefit with using um, a, a smartphone-based solution versus uh, you know, an expensive additional piece of hardware. Definitely. Jonathan, thoughts on, on that? Yeah, I, I absolutely uh, agree. That was the thesis when we started ZenDrive. Um, and, you know, if you think about... Uh, what smartphones capable of now, when you imagine what they'll be capable of in the future, mm -hmm. this is the fastest evolving technological and sensor platform on the planet. And it is rock solid in terms of battery, security, privacy, etc. Um, and so ZenDrive and partners um, that are betting on a smartphone are building on more than a decade of innovation and developer investment in this platform. Definitely. And obviously, MNOs are already involved um, in this area, but there's an argument that they could do it better. Yeah, I mean, we, we, there are some players, quite significant players, as we can see, already making moves in this market. We still believe it is very much an emerging market, uh, still with a lot of potential. Um, and I'm of the view that actually MNOs have a very strong right to play in this space, um, that they already have a very strong brand. Uh, and consumer awareness in, inextricably linked to smartphone technology, which is, of course, the core of this solution. Um, they also have a very strong consumer brand in terms of trust. Um, consumers trust them to deliver the service. Um, you know, so when, as, as, as Jonathan said, when, when a, a crash is detected, they trust MNOs to actually be able to respond, have the infrastructure to do that in a timely and, and safe way. Uh, they also trust MNOs when it comes to uh, 
guarding the data, both from a physical point of view, because you're, you're talking about a lot of you know, sensitive data where people are traveling and so on, but also MNOs are trusted when it comes to not misusing that data. Um, and certainly in comparison, as we've seen, you know, to some of the major te uh, tech players like you know, a Google or, or, or a Facebook that uh, are suffering from that issue at the moment. So I think um, MNOs have actually got a lot of right to play in this space, and I, and I think that's a true advantage that they can really exploit. Obviously, that, um, data protection is a major issue today. Um, Jonathan, do you see that's a primary concern for, from uh, customers? It is. Um, it's something that um, is probably one of the most important criteria that MNOs need to think about when choosing who to partner with. So, uh, you know, at ZenDrive, we've designed the stack, the solution itself, with privacy in mind. So we don't collect any PII, any personally identifiable information, we're mm -hmm. GDPR compliant, etc. Um, but in addition to focusing on privacy first, MNOs need to think about um, the experience of the end user. And so what the next slide is showing is um, that if you are an MNO and you're thinking about getting to market, uh, yes, speed and urgency is there because the market is exploding and there's a huge opportunity, but also you want to be selective and conservative in choosing who you partner with. So, for instance, you want to partner with you know, someone who has already done deployments at this scale with tens of millions of users. Mm. Um, someone that has the experience operating with actual MNOs, because MNOs have very specific needs and you know, are pretty demanding customers. Yeah. Um, and of course, someone that puts privacy and security of data at the center of the design of the platform itself. Yeah, yeah I agree with that entirely. And, and and MNOs have got quite a lot of the elements in place. As, as we've already said, they've got, they have the, the, the consumer brand and the, and the cu customer base. And they have the infrastructure, so you know they, they'll have contact centers, which can be integrated as part of this over, overall solution. But the critical and specialized element is that core analytics, which you know most MNAs won't have. And, and we think the best way to get to market in a timely way is through partnership. And uh, the next slide is covering that. Um, the you know the the optionality of, of building something like this in house is something that some carriers have perhaps the largest and most tech advanced one but even then the time it takes to get to market can be you know five mm -hmm. or, or plus years and so one of the reasons why partnering with someone external is uh, is really powerful is that it accelerates the entire process and it brings expertise and it brings best practices um, so you don't need to make these mistakes first time with your with your uh, end users, and so you know when we think about working with with MNOs, uh, some of the things that we get asked about are, you know, how big is our data set and how many drivers have we analyzed or how accurate is the uh, driver analytics capability and do you know how to work in my geography? Uh, is your solution just trained in North America or have you looked at emerging markets or mm -hmm. or Europe? Um, and so we spend a lot of time optimizing for that and working on that. And with the next slide, you see um, that we're pretty proud of, of what, what we've achieved. We're, we're by far the largest player in analyzing driver behavior. Um, 60 million drivers to date and more than 160 billion miles. And that allowed us to really invest in the algorithms, in the core analytics mm -hmm. stack, as Charles said. Um, and you know, we've, uh, we've had our results tested by third parties and they found that we are about six times more predictive in discovering crashes in advance before, um, sorry, uh, better than industry standard. And so when we partner with MNOs around the globe, we bring some of these best practices. We also bring our international experience with fleets, with other MNOs, uh, with consumer mobile applications where we've deployed exactly this feature, this crash detection and uh, driver score and safety. And so um, we're really excited about the opportunity to democratize access to this safety technology and to partner with MNOs. Certainly. Charles, um, in your uh, research, uh, how do you see ZenDrive st stacking up uh, in, this, in this market? Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, a market leader. I mean, I mean the fact that um, access to you know, billions of, of miles of driven data, um, yeah, that's something that doesn't come around easily. So that's a massive um, 
hurdle overcome there. Uh, but beyond that, it's then what do you, you do with that data? Um, as, as, as Jonathan's already said, you know, they have market leading uh, predictive capability. Um, so absolutely, I mean, I'm, we're not here to, <laughs> to recommend no. anyone in particular, but, but you know, absolutely Zendrive has to be on the shortlist of MN, any MNO that is considering uh, and, and looking for a partner. And uh, you know it's not it's not it's not up to me, but certainly Jonathan can actually st stand there and, and and point out all the the points of evidence. Yeah. So, and uh, Jonathan, you're going to have a big presence at Member World Congress this year. Uh, yeah, we're we're planning to visit, and uh, there's a as as you mentioned, uh, there's global interest in what we do, and people mm -hmm. are very keen, and they see the leaders in the market already moving, and so there's a lot of interest um, worldwide to to explore this. So our plan uh, at Mobile World Congress is to meet with some of the leading mobile operators and to help them create this new opportunity and, uh, and really capitalize on it, but also importantly, bring value to the family unit, which trusts them so much. And so um, this will help save lives. This will help improve your brand presence, but also improve your monetization. Uh, ARPU increases and uh, increase in sell-through of, uh, of premium uh, services, and so we're very excited about uh, about the opportunity to uh, to partner with them enough. Excellent. Uh, that brings us to the end of the presentation segment. Um, we've had a number of questions in from the audience, um, but if uh, your question does not get read out, please contact uh, Zendrive directly. Uh, the information for Jonathan is up on the screen, and he'll be happy to to answer your questions. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, this first one. Um, the speakers address privacy concerns in the presentation. We touched on that. Um, how exactly does Zendrive handle driver data privacy? Great question. So um, when, uh, when driver's um, data is collected through smartphone sensors, it is analyzed on the smartphone itself. It is not sent to the cloud. All of the raw data is crunched on the device. Moreover, we have no concept of the identity of the driver. So we just assign a random set of digits to that driver. And so at the end of a trip, um, if uh, everything is, uh, is done and safe, no data needs to be shared. And if the data is shared, then that data is not associated with any particular individual. If there is a crash, and there is a, you know, a, cata a potentially catastrophic event, then the MNO, the partner, knows how to, collect, to connect the random set of digits that we assign with an individual to that individual identity. Right. And then someone from a call center can approach and make sure that everything's okay and dispatch an ambulance if needed. Right. Um, another one here is, uh, what is Zendrive's margin of error for collision detection? It's, uh, uh, we're, we're north of 95% accurate. Um, and if you imagine instances where there is um, uh, an airbag deployed, instances where you actually want someone watching over and letting uh, authorities know in case, you know, knock on wood, you, you might need an emergency evac, um, in those cases, it's very, very high. Right, right. Okay. Um, another one. This is uh, focusing a bit more on your current uh, work with, with operators. What success have you seen with other wireless carriers you've worked with and their ARPU customer engagement satisfaction, stuff like that? Sure. So um, on one of the previous slides, we, we have a few metrics from prior engagements. So um, ARPU has gone up in services related to crash detection by 60%. Uh, we've seen an increase in sell-through uh, by several multiples and uh, overall satisfaction with the program um, has been super high. And so our experience is not just from the MNO space, but also working with consumer applications, with fleets, and with insurers. And so we bring um, uh, a really diverse set of, of needs and best practices into these deployments. Do you see that um, with insurers that they um, respond well to these sort of um, solutions being deployed by, by customers? Um, insurers certainly are excited about this, and yeah. insurers uh, are excited both about understanding when a crash has occurred, but also providing users with an incentive to drive more safely. And so in partnership with insurers, we provide both of these. The initiation of a claim or the initiation of emergency response, and uh, the scoring and the driver incentive or driver coaching. Right. Um, I've had another one. 
I guess this applies to, um, you can both take this one. Uh, isn't it true that uh, most cars have built-in technology to alleviate distracted driving? Uh, it's, it's true. Um, ergonomics within the vehicle you know, have improved. Um, uh, but if you look at the incidence of, of distracted driving, uh, the, the data that's available, you know, it continues to go up year after year. So, and, and, and part of that is because smartphones are just so central to people's lives now, um, particularly if you're under 25. You conduct the majority of your, your life through, through a mobile phone. Um, uh, and you know, that's not going to go away anytime soon. So um, it's something that needs to be addressed other than you know, fiddling around with the, the ergonomics of design. It, it needs some proactive action to, to um, change mindsets, really, is what is required. Do you agree with that, Jonathan? Absolutely. Um, I think that with all the goodwill and all the technology investment, and there has been both mm -hmm. great um, investment and also legislation and enforcement, yeah. Um, the data speaks, and Zendrive is one of the big players in analyzing this data, um, has done some of these studies, and we see the trend going up. Uh, in the latest study of distracted driving we've done, we found that uh, nine out of 10 trips in the US have some form of distracted driving. Mm. That's roughly 90%. Right. So everyone is distracted, and everyone is fiddling with their phone, and it's unclear that the vehicles by themselves can mitigate that. Definitely. I think we've got time for one more question. It's kind of on the similar lines. What stops customers uh, with newer cars from avoiding an opt-in distracted driving service with a my car already does this objection? Jonathan. It's a bit, it's a so, <laughs> a bit of a mouthful. Um, an opt-in <laughs> distracted driving Service. Service, yep. With a my car already does this objection. Um, so I, I think I understand the question, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So some um, mobile operating system allow you to yeah. um, basically stop texting while driving. I think um, iPhones detect straight away. That's when, right. Sometimes you're on a train. But That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the, the challenge with that is that you know, those capabilities are available on the, on the OS itself. Unfortunately, consumers really do care about the text that just arrived or the email from the boss or uh, the Facebook like they just received. And um, you know, again, the numbers are, are telling. People don't use those features. People make the choice to just check this time. And unfortunately, um, the result is, is, is tragic. We've seen in the US an increase in legislative action. So more and more states are making it illegal to, to use the phone while driving. And still, that's not sufficient. And so even though the technology is there and available, even though it's illegal and you can get a ticket, and even though you might risk your life and the life of others on the road, people still choose to check their phone. But the other aspect is t just turning off the phone is, is, is one thing. Mm. But actually, with driver safety, you're capturing what the driver is doing, and you're then feeding back at the appropriate time, not while they're driving, mm. feeding back where they went wrong. And, and someone getting a summary of a, of a journey they've just done when the journey's finished, it's, it's, really pow it's really powerful because you can say, OK, yeah, actually, I remember taking that turn too fast or I should have slowed down more. And actually, it, uh, there's a growing evidence that that coaching in a, in a, a real, almost a real-time basis and very contextual actually brings about lasting change. And I think Zendrive have actually done some really interesting research in this area where um, you isolate or you, you identify the most dangerous drivers provide coaching and actually it brings about something like a 49% reduction in, in, in collisions uh, within a very short period of time. So, you know, turning off the phone is one thing, but actually capturing that data and, and making people better drivers in a positive way rather than penalising them for, for, for using the phone, actually saying this is why you're going wrong and actually making them realise that brings around lasting behavioural change. How do you um, feedback driver coaching tips, for example, to the drivers? Sure. So um, in many of our deployments with insurers or with fleets, there is a, uh, a feedback mechanism that Charles was describing, where at the end of a trip, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, um, some coaching tips are, are highlighted and people can actually see, drivers can see what went wrong. 
uh, some consumer deployments as well extend automatic crash detection and crash notifications and add more texture and more information, mm -hmm. not just to the driver, but often to the family unit, right? So um, if I'm commuting to, to work, then uh, you know, my spouse might care about how I drive a lot, and we might have a conversation over dinner if I'm driving erratically. Or if I have a teenager who's taking their friends to tennis, then I care about the teenager, and also the friend's parents care about how my son is driving their friends. So there's a lot of um, skin in the game. There's a lot of uh, uh, people that care deeply about driver behavior and surfacing that information changes behavior both on the consumer front and on the professional fleet front. Excellent. Guys, uh, that's all we have time for. Jonathan, thanks for, for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Charles, great to have you. Yeah, enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, that's all we have time for, but um, remember, if you have any questions that were not asked, uh, please uh, get in touch with Jonathan directly. His um, details are on the screen. Uh, thank you very much, and goodbye.